A wound is a disruption of the normal structure and function of the skin and soft tissue architecture. The main principle of proper healing is, it should be well vascularized, free of devitalized tissue, clear of infection, and moist. Take care of wounds. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and clean water, if possible. Avoid touching the wound with your fingers while treating it, if possible, use disposable, latex gloves. 1. Step, apply direct pressure to any bleeding wound, to control hemorrhage. Tourniquets are rarely indicated since they may reduce tissue viability. 2. Examine wounds for gross contamination, devitalized tissue, and foreign bodies. 3. Remove constricting rings or other jewelry from injured body part. 4. Cleanse the wound periphery with soap and sterile water or available solutions, and provide anesthetics and analgesia whenever possible. 5. Wash, irrigate wounds with saline solution using a large bore needle and syringe. If unavailable, bottled water is acceptable. 6. Leave contaminated wounds, bites, and punctures open. Because wounds that are sutured in an unsterile environment, or are not cleansed, irrigated, and debrided appropriately, are at high risk for infection due to contamination. Wounds that are not closed primarily because of high risk of infection, should be considered for delayed primary closure by experienced medical staff using sterile technique. 7. Remove devitalized tissue and foreign bodies prior to repair as they may increase the incidence of infection. 8. Clip hair close to the wound, if necessary. Shaving of hair is not necessary and may increase the chance of wound infection. 9. Cover wounds with dry dressing, deeper wounds may require packing with saline-soaked gauze and subsequent coverage with a dry bulky dressing. Be vigilant for the presence of other injuries in patients with any wounds. Ensure adequate referral, follow-ups, and re-evaluations whenever possible. Dirty water and soil and sand can cause infection. Wounds can become contaminated by even very tiny amounts of dirt. Puncture wounds can carry bits of clothing and debris into wound resulting in infection. Crush injuries are more susceptible to infection than wounds from shearing forces. If infection develops, most infections caused by staphylococci and streptococci. For initial antimicrobial treatment of infected wounds, beta-lactam antibiotics with antistaphylococcal activity, cephalexin, Diclarxacillin, ampicillin solbactam etc., and clindamycin are recommended options. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. Infections caused by this organism will not respond to treatment with beta-lactam antibiotics and should be considered in patients who fail to respond to this therapy. Treatment options for these community MRSA infections include trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, oral, or vancomycin, intravenous. Clindamycin is also a potential option. Incision and drainage of any subcutaneous collections of pus, abscesses, is also an important component of treating wound infections. Many topical agents and alternative therapies are available that are intended to improve the wound healing environment and, although data are lacking to support any definitive recommendations, some may be useful under specific circumstances.